So we've cut some videos earlier about the refractometer and now it's our time to talk about the pH meter and the measurement of the pH meter for our solar thermal fluid. There are two major, I'm sure there are more, but there are two major solar thermal fluids that are used in industry. One comes in a green fluid and one comes in a red fluid. Now due to permissions and making this available to everybody, I just assume not use any names, but I think you can very quickly find out who produces the green fluid and who produces the red fluid. The red fluid is a sample that we have taken of our solar thermal system that's been running for a full year in full operation, actually approaching 18 months. So a year and a half it's been in operation. And over on the bottom side we've got a sample of the green fluid that we're going to be putting into our training system. So here's how we use this. We've got permission from Hannah to use this equipment so we can show you everything here that we have. We first got this pH meter and it was dry. In the inside of the pH meter there's a small wick and that wick needs to be moist. You cannot let it dry out. And so the very first thing that they required is that we soak this for a minimum of two hours prior to doing any work. And we put it in just a saline solution which according to the manual is this pH storage solution. And so we've let it store for well over two or three days now. And then what we did is the next step was we wanted to rinse that out with some pH 7 solution and that's what we have here. Now this may be difficult to really render on the video here but this is the small sample of pH 7.01 that they've given us and now what they want us to do is we want to recalibrate this to best that we can for what we've got in the pH and so forth. So I've got this sitting inside of here and then I am going to just gently move this so I can get a nice clear sample and then we're going to read the numbers and I can't read the numbers from the back side so I'll just show you let you zoom in and then I'm gonna look at it and then I'm gonna use my small screwdriver and recalibrate this to as close to 7.0 as I can and once we have that then we know our pH meter is calibrated so right now I see 6.6 .6. I'm gonna reach in here and I, I'm adjusting a small potentiometer inside of here which is just gonna readjust and let's see if I can 9 and 7 so that means we have our solution now at 7.0. Now that I have that, I'm going to turn my system off. I don't want to tap it too much, but I do want to get that fluid out. Earlier in the videos, we had done our refractometer and, and figured out what the solar freeze protection was. And then we went to their website and we verified that it was within range. Now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to measure here and it looks to me like I have a solution of 8.6 so that's our solution that we have in there 8.6. When we went to this manufacturer's website we noticed that there was a range between 9.0 to 9.5 so that can tell me a few things here about this solution. A, it is on the low end of the scale, which may or may not be entirely bad. I don't know what that's really truly telling me. I I'm not terribly worried about it because when I looked at the refractometer, my range was well within the freeze protection range that I wished it to be, and the pH seems to be on the low side. Is it a concern? It could be. Is this breaking down? It could be. The solar thermal system that it was put into was an old system from the 70s and there could be impurities in there and there could be some other stuff that has caused this to break down a little bit. I don't know. We're going to find out. The reason we're going to do these labs now and we do our measurements now is 5, 10, 15 years from now we've got a base reference. We should write these numbers down and put it with the system. So when we come back in 10 years, if we see this is now down from 8.8 .8, down to 7.0, we know that this has drastically changed over time. So that's one concern that I have there. So I'm going to clean this up gently, and now I'm going to make a measurement. Again, I'm just going to clean it off with my solution here, and I'm going to put it back. It should come back to 7.0, and it has. It's come back to 7.0, and now I'm going to re-clean it. So this time, turn that off. I'm going to measure my solar fluid that we're going to install in our system. So I'm just going to take a small sample, I'm going to put it into the level, and it again is reading 9.12, there we go, 9.3. And this product, the green product, it runs from a range of 9.5 to 10.0. 
And we know that the solution, according to their website, is a 50-50 mix. So according to their research, they say that a 50-50% mix should be a 9.5 to 10.0. So this glycol system is perfect. On the other system, our system may not be exactly a 50-50. So that may account for that discrepancy of pH. But either way, we now have our pH levels, and we feel comfortable that this system is ready to go.